going to make a scene. If you want to tell me where you were tonight, that's up to you. If you don't want to tell me, that's all right, too. Well, being you give me a choice, I'll take number two. Good night. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. George Stevens, I want an explanation about where you've been until three o'clock in the morning. You want an explanation, huh? Yes, and right away. Well, honey, would you believe me if I told you I fell asleep in the lodge hall and just now woke up? No. Well, then there ain't no use in going into that. Uh, I'll put it another way. Would you believe me if I told you I got on the wrong subway and ended up at Coney Island? I would not. Honey, I think we're going at this from the wrong angle. I'll tell you what. Tell me what you would believe, and that's where I was. My patience is exhausted. All right, honey, I'll tell you the truth. I got in a little card game with the boys. I know I shouldn't have stayed, but you know how them things is. I was 36 cents winner, and I didn't want to quit and have them think I was a bum sport. Well, now that's better. Yeah, honey, I know I shouldn't have stayed so late, but uh, that's the truth. That's exactly how it happened. Well, George, now that you've finally told me the truth, it's all right. But you should have told me that in the first place. I'm going on to bed. How could I have told her that in the first place when I just now thought of it? <laughs> Hi, Amos. Oh, hello, Kingfish. Well, Amos, I stopped by to tell you that I want to thank you for that job you got me at the Blue Zipper Cafe. Oh, you did get the job all right, then. Oh, yeah, I started working last night. Oh, that's fine, Kingfish. I bet Sapphire was real excited when she heard you was working. Well, to tell you the truth, I ain't told her nothing about it yet. You ain't? Well, well why not? Well, Amos, I try it hard sometimes, but it seems like I don't last too long on these jobs. I usually tell Sapphire that I'd work and then she come at the ballin' with joy. Then the next day I have to tell her that I fired and then she come at the ballin' about that. So now I'm gonna wait until I fired before I tell her I workin' and gonna let her combine all the ballin' into one big lump. Well, uh, you ought to be able to hold a job all right if you like working there, Kingfish. Oh, I like that fine, Amos. They treat me nice. For instance, uh, last night when we got through working about two o'clock, the boss asked me and Tootsie, uh, she's the cashier there, to have a bite to eat. And he set us right down to the table there, and we had ourselves a meal. Oh, yeah, I know the boss there. He, he's real friendly, all right. Yeah, but look, Amos, I don't want nobody to know about this job until I have a real success at it. So we just keep this between me and you for the time being. Well, okay, Kingfish, if that's the way you want it. Well, thanks again, Amos. So long. See you later. So long. Sapphire, are you sure he was playing cards last night? Why, of course, Mama. George knows better than to lie to me. Mm. Well, I was just asking. Yes? Are you Mrs. Stevens? No. Well, I guess I can leave the message with you. I'm Mr. Holbrook, manager of the Blue Slipper Nightclub. Uh -huh. Mr. Stevens dropped his wallet at the club last night, and as much as I was in the neighborhood and thought he might be worried about it, I thought I'd drop it by. You say he dropped his wallet in the Blue Slipper Nightclub? Yes. Actually, Tootsie found it after he left the table. Tootsie! 
Roxy? Yes. Well, I must be going along. Good day. Hey. <laughs> Sapphire, come on in here. The old fire horse done broke out of the barn again. What are you talking about, Mama? Well, as far as I can see at this moment, you is running second to Tootsie. Tootsie? Yes, Tootsie. A man just come over here from the Blue Slipper nightclub, and he said George dropped his wallet while he was sitting at a table with Tootsie. Oh, Mama. George told me he was playing cards at the lodge last night. Mm. Oh. Do you think by any chance, Mama, he could be yet getting interested in other women? Sapphire, face facts. A man don't look at a road map unless he's going someplace. <laughs> That's the age of the start. When a man gets over 40, then he gets the courage to do the things that he's been thinking about all those years. <laughs> the thing to do is to fight fire with fire. Oh, I mean it. You just get George so jealous that he'll worry about you so much, he'll forget all about Tootsie, whoever she is. Well, that's very easily said, Mama. And it's easily done, too. Now, he's done told you that he's going to be out late again tonight. The thing for you to do is to entertain another gentleman. And when them three snoopy old sisters across the court there get through gossiping, it'll get back to George in no time. <laughs> You think it might work, Mama? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. After all, I don't know any other man. It's silly. Oh, yes, you do know another man. And when a wife is seen with a man's best friend, that's when it hurts him the most. You mean... Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean Andrew <laughs> H. Brown. <laughs> Sapphire, it's 7.30. I sure hope you're ready. I'm all ready, Mama. Oh, you look lovely, daughter. Oh, thank you, Mama. Mm -hmm. And say, our plans are working out wonderfully. George says he'll be coming home late again tonight. Huh. And I notice you've got the table set near the window so the neighbors can see everything that's going to happen. <laughs> Do come in. Well, excuse me, Sapphire. I didn't mean to bust in with you still in your camisole. Oh, Andy, this is my new evening gown. It's a copy of a Paris model. Yeah, looks like they run out of material while they was copying it. <laughs> uh, hello, Miss May. Hello, Andy. So nice of you to come up and see us tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to be running along. Have a nice time, you two. All right, Mama. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Yes, nighty night. Good night, Mama. <laughs> Andy, won't you sit down? Uh, Dinner's all ready. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Say, Sapphire, yes. I noticed there's only two places at the table here. Ain't you gonna eat with me and the kingfish? Oh, George isn't here, Andy. We're alone. Alone? Yes. You mean there ain't nobody up here except me and you and the roast beef? That's right, Andy. Yeah. Well, I tell you, Sapphire, I think I'd better run along, because uh, according to Emily Post, a roast beef ain't much of a chaperone. Oh, no, Andy. We'll be here later. Now, don't worry about a thing. Sit down. Yeah, you say so. Yes, you sit down. Oh, what a beautiful moon. Oh, yeah. So romantic. Andy, here's a bachelor button. You should be wearing one. <laughs> All finished, Andy? Yeah. All right. I'll remove these things. 
and I'll bring on the main course. <laughs> Priscilla! Priscilla! Here you are, Andy. I hope you like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's an orgy. You know, Sapphire, I wonder if we could let the blinds down. I got a feeling that somebody's watching us. Oh, 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 Andy, don't be silly. Who on earth would be interested in an innocent little dinner like this? Now go on and eat your roast beef. And after the meal, we'll have a nice long chat. Just the two of us. Well, what time is the kingfish coming home? Don't worry about George. <laughs> On. Why, I haven't seen anything like this since Greta Garber in Flesh and the Devil. It's positively scandalous. It's unbelievable. Yes, and I'm going to see to it that her husband finds it out. You're, You're right, right, Cynthia. Cynthia. Hello, George G. Fitz Stevens speaking. Well, this is just a well-meaning neighbor. Uh, Mr. Stevens, I think there is something that you ought to know. Uh, last night while you were out, your wife had a gentleman visitor up for dinner. What? A gentleman visitor? That's right. I saw it with my two sisters. And I just thought you ought to know. Hello, hello. Wait a minute. A gentleman visitor. Well, hello there, Brad Eyes. How you doing today? Uh... What's the matter, King V? Oh, Calhoun, something awful done happened. I never told nobody this, but I got a job in a restaurant. And last night, while I was away working, a fella come up to my house and had dinner with my wife. A neighbor done phoned me about it. Oh, what is I gonna do? A fella come up and had dinner with your wife? King V, this is one of the most dastardly things one man could do to another. A thing like this shows the terrible evil that lurks in the heart of this man. It shows that this unscrupulous viper has sunk to the lowest form of chicanery. Kingfish, whoever this fella is, he done done a bad thing. What the hell for dinner? Oh, Calhoun, I go and crazy. that. I gotta find out who this fiend is that violating the sanctity of my home. Well, now, Kingfish, as I see it, the only way to find out who he is is to find the neighbor who called you. That's the thing to do, Calhoun. But, Calhoun, 
I'm nervous. You scout around and see can you find that person, then bring me the facts. It was a woman. Well, King Feet, I've always been a man willing to help a pal in need. I'll do what I can. And as soon as I find out anything, I'll call you up here to lie. Oh, thank you, Calhoun. Thank you. Oh, this is awful. Uh, how do you do, ma'am? I wonder if I could come in and talk to you a minute. Yes, I guess so. Uh, thank you. So won't you sit down? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, thank you just the same. Uh, how do you do, ladies? You see, I'm looking for a well-meaning neighbor who done see some action in the apartment house here through the window last night. Well, whatever gave you the idea, we'd know something about this. The nerve of anybody suspecting us of a thing like that. We don't know the first thing about it. I can't imagine why you came here. We're not the type who go around snooping in other people's business. It's an insult. Cynthia, show the man to the door. Well, excuse me. Why, you little rascals, you. Come on, my girls, dish me the day. It was purely an accident. We just happened to be washing the windows. But we couldn't help but see what happened. Well, what did happen? Well, well you think see, she I'm had on the most of the feeling that she had on. She had strange nasty. Oh, and all of a sudden, they were putting all the in the Hold it, Jerry. Hold it. Why don't you just cackle one at a time? Now, come on, let's take it from the beginning again. Well, as soon as they were seated at the table, the first thing she did was to pin a flower in his buttonhole. Yeah. And then when she brought in the roast beef, she patted one of the cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he ate four pieces of roast beef. Well, up to now, the feature attraction seemed to be the roast beef. Well, after the meal, all we could see was her. She just stood there looking down at him, and she was obviously making love to him. Yeah, yeah. Now we're getting down to pay dirt. What happened then? Well, she was just about to take him in her arms. That's not the way it happened, Cynthia. He grabbed her in his arms, and then he tried to... Priscilla! That's not the way it happened. They grabbed each other. And then, yeah, when the, well, and then, and then, and then what happened? My telescope went out of focus and I lost the picture. Well, oh. at any rate, it was obvious that they were both madly in love. And after what we saw last night, I'd hate to think what would happen tonight. What you got to say to that? Uh, you wouldn't have a spare perch at that window tonight, would you? I'd have you to know that what we saw was only an accident. Well, I, I ain't interested in no more details, girls. The, what I want to know is, did you by any chance recognize the man that was in the apartment? Oh, yes. We can describe him perfectly. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Hi, Kingfish. Say, Kingfish, I want to ask you something about last night. I was wondering if, uh... Say, Kingfish. Why is you got that baseball bat on your desk? What is that for? Andy, I'm gonna pulverize somebody. Soon as I catch who I'm looking for, I'm gonna take this bat and scatter them all over the state. Well, who is the fellow Kingfish? After all, I's your pal. And I'll help you take care of him. Thanks, Andy. But I'm just sitting here waiting for a phone call to find out who it was. Yeah, well, I'll wait with you. Uh, tell me, what did this fellow do that you wants to pulverize? Andy, do you know what this sneak, this home wrecker, this fiend, do you know what he done done? Like a thief in the night, he come into my home and tampered with my most precious possession. Oh, uh, somebody done stole your toupee again, huh? <laughs> no, while I was working late last night, this home wrecker come up and had dinner with my wife. Well, if he, uh... <laughs> Wait a minute, Kingfish. Let's get something straight here before the conversation flies off on another tangerine. <laughs> oh, that, uh, this fella that me and you is waiting to subdivide with the baseball bat, is he the one that done had dinner with your wife? Right. Well, like Napoleon said Waterloo, I'd had a lot better days than this. 
And I tell you, Andy, when I find out who this fella is, I'm gonna take this bat and I'm gonna haul off and... Hello? Oh, you found out who he was? Yeah, I certainly did. With the cooperation of three charming young ladies. I can't hear you, Calhoun. There's too much giggling going on there. Uh, look, spell the fella's name. B, like in baby. R, like in round. O, like in Ohio. W, like in weasel. N, like he nearer than I thought he was. Oh, you, my lifelong pal, is the one who went up and had dinner with my wife. What have you got to say? Well, the roast beef was too well done. Andy, you ain't getting away with this. Turn it loose, I see. I turn it loose. Hey, hey fellas, fellas, take it easy. What's yeah. going on here? Amos, make the kingfish put that bat down. He's acting like a madman. Now, you stay out of this, Amos. I know exactly what I'm doing. Last night, when I was working, this weasel come up to my house and had dinner with my wife. Listen, Amos. Sapphire had invited me up for dinner, and I thought the Kingfish was gonna be there. Kingfish, is you out of your mind? Andy's your best friend, and he wouldn't be interested in Sapphire, and she wouldn't be interested in him. Now, if Sapphire invited him up to dinner, there must have been a reason for it. The thing for you to do is to go home and speak to your wife. That's right, Kingfish. All I went up there for was for dinner. Well, I guess you're right. I better go home and speak to my wife. I'm sorry, Andy. Yeah. Kingfish, what you do a thing like that for? That for them full slices of roast beef you done it. But George, how would Mama and I to know that you had this new job at the nightclub? Well, that ain't no reason for you to figure that I'll galvanizing around with some gal. Well, George, I only invited Andy up here to dinner to make you jealous so you would stay home at night. I thought that you... You thought. Yeah, you thought. If you don't know me now, after 25 years, you ain't never gonna know me. But, George, darling... Look, Mama, you just had killed your sapphire. You probably egged on in the whole thing. I'm so sorry, George. Can I make you a cup of tea? No, I ain't interested in no tea. I just fed up with you two being suspicious all the time. Well, George, I didn't know what to think with you being out so late every night. Well, that ain't gonna happen no more. I done quit that job. I getting a new job. Oh, George, I'm so glad. And they gonna be a new rule around here. From now on, no more suspicion. Don't believe nothing unless you see it with your own eyes. Now, have both you all got that straight? Unless you see it with your own eyes. Yes, George. Now, oh, I'll have some tea and a little more respect around here. I certainly hope George likes the tie I got for him. Oh, I'm sure he will, Sapphire. He's so sweet. <laughs> yes, he is, Mama. <laughs> and you know, never again will I believe anything unless I see it with my own eyes. You're right, Sapphire. I wonder how George likes his new job. Oh, I guess he likes it all right. He said he's working at the Globe Department Store, and that's a very nice firm. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Bus ought to be along any minute now. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sapphire. Hey, ain't that George coming out that store? Yes, that was George. He got in that cab. Oh, well, what are you doing down this way? The Glow Department store is over on Lenox Avenue. Look, he's, he's coming this way. leaving here for good. Yes, Sapphire. I'm a witness. I saw it in my own eyes. Come on, let's go home and start packing. <laughs> <laughs> 
careful on these stops, sir, driver. The Globe Department store don't want nothing to happen to this window dummy. They kind of fragile, you know. 